Find an orthonormal basis, puts the following matrix A into diagonal form. Now, A is going to be the 3 by 3 matrix. Every entry is equal to 1, except along the diagonal where they're equal to 0. Our problem is going to be an application of the spectral theorem. So, we have A is a real symmetric matrix, so all the entries are real. We take the transpose of our matrix, we get our matrix back. Then, all the eigenvalues for our matrix are going to be real. And we're going to be able to find an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors for our matrix. Now, why is this significant? Well, if we take any real matrix, if I go looking for eigenvalues, we're not guaranteed that they're all real. So we could wind up with complex numbers. If I want to stay in okay, the context of real vector spaces, we can't use complex numbers as eigenvalues. Then, even if we have all eigenvalues real, there's no guarantee that I can get a basis of eigenvectors. So what happens there, you're going to need to forget about putting your matrix in diagonal form, and then you'd want to try something like maybe Jordan canonical form. OK. Now, note, to say that I have an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors, OK, well, that just means if I take those eigenvectors and I form the basis matrix, so we're going to take our vectors, put them in as the columns of a matrix, then this matrix will put A into diagonal form. OK, so D will be diagonal. And then we have that if I take P transpose times P, we get the identity. So we're able to put our matrix in diagonal form using an orthogonal matrix. To get an idea of what this equation here says, if you work out all the row column products, that's just saying the columns are orthogonal if they're not equal, and they're going to be unit vectors if we measure the lengths. Now, what's the point of having an orthogonal matrix? So what will that get us? First, it says that our change of basis is going to preserve the standard inner product. So if I start with okay, lengths before I apply P, we're going to wind up having the same lengths after we apply P. So that's all this says here. So the idea is our change of basis by P preserves angles, and it preserves lengths. Then we'll also have that the inverse of the matrix P is just equal to the transpose. So from a calculation point of view, okay, it's much easier to take a transpose than it is to use our inverse formulas. So this is just a computational shortcut. For our matrix A, eigenvalues are going to be 2 and minus 1 with multiplicity 2. So that verifies that our eigenvalues are real. For the corresponding basis of eigenvectors, for 2, we have 1, 1, 1. For minus 1, we have 1, 0, minus 1, and 1, minus 1, 0. So we'll call these v1, v2, and v3. Now, you should check those. If you want to see the work that's in an earlier video, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We want to show that we can find an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. So let's see what we have here. Now, for eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues, okay, if you have a symmetric matrix, these are automatically going to be orthogonal. So let's check that. So if I take V1 against V2, I get a 0. If I take V1 against V3, we also get 0. If we take V2 against V3, I'm going to get a 1. So our basis isn't orthogonal. We can make it orthogonal if we replace v3 with another vector. So what we'll do is we're going to replace v3 with w3. Here we're going to take v3, subtract off the part of v3 that's in the direction of v2. Okay, we do that using a recipe from Graham Schmidt. Now, when we work that out, we get the vector 1 half minus 1, 1 half. If we recheck our inner products, 
what will happen? Well, V1 against W3 is going to be 0. V2 against W3 is also going to be 0. So now I have an orthogonal basis. To get an orthonormal basis, I just need to have unit vectors. So we take each vector, divide by its length. Then we have our orthonormal basis over here. Let's put our matrix in diagonal form. So we have our orthonormal basis. I'm going to load each basis vector in as a column of our matrix. So we get our basis matrix P. Then we're going to compute P inverse AP. Now, since P is orthogonal, P inverse is equal to P transpose. Then I also have a trick for multiplying A times P. So for A times P, note that the columns of P are all eigenvectors. So if I multiply by A, I'm really multiplying each column vector by A. Since they're eigenvectors, we just multiply each column by the eigenvalue. So for A times P, we're going to have 2 times the first vector, minus 1 times the second vector, minus 1 times the third vector. Then we multiply by P transpose. So we just flip our matrix across the diagonal. We work it out. We get the diagonal matrix with entries 2, minus 1, minus 1 on the diagonal. Check in our work. These diagonal entries should be our eigenvalues in the same order as our basis of eigenvectors. So here we're going to have 2 minus 1 minus 1, and that checks out our work. What happens if we don't use the orthonormal basis? So we could have stopped with the basis here. So in this case, we don't have unit vectors, and V2 and V3 are not orthogonal. OK, they're inner proxy equal to 1. We can still use this basis to put our matrix in diagonal form. So we'll get our matrix P. Note, P transpose times P is not equal to the identity. So P inverse is not going to be equal to P transpose. I work out P inverse AP. My trick for A times P is still going to work, but for P inverse, I'm actually going to have to compute. So we go to one of our formulas. Now, when matrices get bigger, even a 4 by 4, computing the inverse could take a little bit of work. 